Welcome to this video where we can start learning some basics of Golang or Go programming language. Now to start with what I'm going to do is go to my Go path and I have a GitHub account called Alex Ellis and so this is where I want to put all my projects. We're going to have a just a basic CLI, I'm going to make a directory for that and I like to use Visual Studio Code. Once you've installed this you can actually type the word code and name of the folder and it will open up that window for you. From here we just need a new file. The standard in Go is to call these files main.go and then the first line of this uh, file should be package and the word main. We're almost ready to run this code. Um, it's very simple. If you've used other programming languages like C Sharp, um, it's a very similar structure here but it's even simpler than that. In fact, that program now can be run. We go run. Obviously, you do need to have Go installed on your machine. I'm running Mac OS here and I installed this using the installer at the Go website. Now, you'll notice there is no binary here. But what we can do is we can do Go build and create a binary. And there are some options we can to use here to make that a static binary. We could also share that with um, somebody like a Windows user without making any additional changes to the code most of the time. The way we can cross compile this is to put the word go OS equals Windows before our go build. So whilst I have the original CLI, which is a, a Mac OS binary, I've now got a CLI.exe, which obviously I can't run on my machine, but I could share that with somebody. I can also cross compile to Linux. And if you've got a Raspberry Pi and you're into that sort of thing, you can compile as well to uh, Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi ARM architecture. The first thing people tend to want to do is to print a message. So I would do something like, hello world. As soon as I hit save, Visual Studio Code should help me out here and it's run an import and it's put this format package and that's where the print line lives. Again, we can do a build or we can do go run and we have our message. So in a very short period of time, we've been able to build um, this hello world that we can now cross compile to any sort of architecture, copy it to another machine and run it. That's one of the reasons that, that I am a fan of Go. Now, the, these imports can be put one line at a time, like that, like so. But uh, there is another way, which is to put these within parenthesis, and then we can put multiple lines as so. Let's look at an environmental variable. Now you saw I put into the Go build an environmental variable of a Linux, and that's how it knew how to switch. There's some code actually in the OS package, and we can run getenv, and I'm just gonna think what kind of environment variables we actually have. Set on bash. So we've got user, and I think that might be interesting to look at. So let's get the user variable. Something you're about to find out about Go is that when you try to run um, code and you've got variables that you've not used, it doesn't like it. it. will actually complain, and I think this is a good thing. If you're using Node.js, perhaps um, maybe using C Sharp, you wouldn't get this kind of information. Not unless you ran a linter. It was a blocking error. And now what I could do is I could just put in here, hello in user. And it said hello Alex, right? But because this is an environmental variable, I can override it on a uh, without actually resetting it for the entire system, just by typing in user equals I don't know John. We do the same, and now we've got a slightly different name. And this is something that is very important for cloud native applications or applications on the cloud. There's a common pattern or 12 factor apps where you may configure the entire behavior of the application through a number of environmental variables. Now Go also provides support for flags and this is probably about as easy as it gets. 
um, what we can do is add the flags package. You notice if I save this, again, because Go is being smart, it will remove that um, import. So we want to type in something. Perhaps it was flag that we want. Yeah, it's flag instead. But even when you've been doing Go for several years, sometimes there's one or two things that you will forget. Now, we can do flag parse and we can run this. It should work, but we don't actually have any flags. Let's do this. Let's do a bulvar. And the first thing we want to put here is saying is a name. We could put that as print user. What is a default? So I think we want to print the name by default. So we put true. And then here we can tell people how this works. Print a name um, if set to true. Now, once that had actually been parsed, um, the value would need to be got back and inspected. And once you'd got hold of that, you would need to um, to use it. Right? But there's a slightly different way that we can access these by putting, I think, is it the letter P? We just put the ball var on the end. And now we can capture that directly into a local variable. And there's two ways of declaring these local variables. You notice I'm also putting and here because I want to pass the reference rather than the value of print ball. If I passed the value into another method and set a different value into it, effectively nothing will happen. It won't get changed. And again, that's very similar to what you might be used to from object oriented programming languages. So um, every definition we make, every ball is automatically false. There's two ways to define a default variable. One is with the var, and the other one is we could put um, false like this. They're effectively equivalent. Um, personally, I'm going to start with the var style. And then what we want to do is say if print user, print the user. Let's go and run that. And we've got, we've got what we expected. As a bonus, we get dash dash help on our command lines now. And this is a pretty weird URL, and that's because Go Run actually does make a binary. It's just hidden away from us. So now let's run the CLI with help. We get a nice, pretty output here. It tells us how these things work. Print user equals false. And there, we didn't print. So very short period of time, we've got a main.go set up. We can cross compile this to other architectures. We've read both flags and environmental variables. It's over to you now to go and play with this, but I'm going to show you one more thing about printing. Now we put print line, but again, you probably heard of print F and the various other kinds of um, examples that we have here. We can now use a simple directive, S for string, D for integers, and so on. And we can do go build, this is one of my favorites, and, and then run the code. So that was print user false. We'll print user true is the default. And oh look, we do need to be aware that new lines are required. There, there we go. So, I'm going to sign off now. I hope you enjoyed this. A quick overview of Go. Let me know what you want to see in the next video. Bye-bye.